Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this week's video is just going to be a little reading vlog. Today is the Friday before Christmas, so I have a long weekend. I'm not doing like a 24 hour reading vlog or anything like I normally do. Um, but I am still going to be doing a reading vlog because I do plan on trying to just catch up on some reading. I am off until um, I go back Wednesday. So I have tonight, Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday to get some reading in. So I figure why not film it for you guys because I have quite a few fun reading plans. So first I want to talk to you about what I'm currently reading. So I literally just started it. I'm like 10 pages in. Um, I'm reading The Disappearances of Draco Malfoy um, by Speechwriter. It's a Germione fan fiction. I'm reading that on my Kindle. Um, I am having an issue where all I can pick up are quick, easy rom-coms or Germione fan fiction. Like I cannot pick up fantasy. I've been thinking about all these books I want to read and I genuinely, it stresses me out just thinking about them. So I'm just like, you know what? You've hit your reading goal. Just relax. So this next week is just going to kind of be just kind of chill, chill reading, just reading whatever I want with no no qualms, you know what I'm saying? Because there's so many books I want to read, but we're just going to read, read for funsies. So like I said, so I just started this. So I have literally no thoughts at all. So that's what that's about. But what I know about the book is it's a Deathly Hallows rewrite, um, where when, spoiler for Harry Potter, if anybody doesn't want to know, um, when in the original series, when Draco goes to kill Dumbledore, this book takes place as if he takes, if Draco takes Dumbledore's offer to pretty much go into hiding and work with Ron, Hermione, and Harry in getting the Horcruxes. So I think Dumbledore like fakes his death and his mother's death, Draco and Narcissa, um, so that Draco can kind of escape the life of a Death Eater because Dumbledore can kind of tell that like he doesn't really want to be a Death Eater. He's just doing it because, you know, Voldemort is obviously like threatening him. Um, so that's kind of the gist of this book. Again, I'm like 10 pages in, so I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Um, but after that or during that, the only other book that I would probably pick up is the second book in the Wells Family Interconnected Standalone series by Juliana Smith. It's called Signed, Sealed, Delivered, um, and it follows the best friend of the main character from the first book and the main character's sister. So it's best friends. Um, so it's brother's best friend is the trope, and I think it's also about anonymous pen pal like they've been writing each other for like 10 years but they don't know that they're writing each other and I guess it finally like comes to a head and I have like fallen in love with Juliana Smith's writing I read baggage claim for um my reading holiday books for a week video and I have just like loved like just fallen in love with her writing um I actually ended up all of her books are on KU um but I actually ended up buying two of her books on Pango and they're signed. And then I also saw that she had books on her storefront for sale that were signed. And so I bought the other two over there. So I actually got two of them in the mail because I just finished the first book in the Wells family, um, Interconnected Standalone series, which follows, um, which I'm not going to talk about it a lot in here because obviously I already read it. And so I'll talk about it like in a wrap up of sorts. But this is, it's called Per My Last Email, Luke and Layla. And I just love these books. First of all, I love all of her covers. And like I said, it is signed. And it came with like a sticker of like these, of like them. And then the map in the front of the book, it, um, it came like with a printout of this map and I'm obsessed. So anyways, so this is the first book 
And then the second book follows his sister and best friend. Um, so that's what I might pick up is the second one, which is signed, sealed, and delivered. I love her writing. It's just so fast paced, so just easy to get through. Such a fun time. Like I'm laughing, I'm getting all the feels and I just love the characters that she writes. And like, she just references all the fun nerdy things that I love. Um, like Harry Potter, Star, like Star Wars, like she talks about all these things and I just, I love it. So I got that one signed and then I also got um, I Can Fix That. And this is the cover, you guys, I'm obsessed with her covers. Like they're quite literally, that's why I bought them because they're just the cutest things ever. Um, and again, this one is signed. This one's not part of that like series. I think this is one of her first books that she published. It says that this, what this is about is June Hart is an affectionate and chatty first grade teacher who comes from a family of wealthy money driven doctors except for her grandmother. When June inherits her grandmother's 1920s farmhouse, she's compelled to remodel it, hoping to show the egotistical family she has that she's capable of being more than a teacher. In the process, she finds herself spending a considerable amount of time with her hot and ill-tempered contractor, Grant Dawes. So it's Grumpy Sunshine and home remodeling and seems like small town short sweet to the point probably has the third wells family book coming out um i think march of 24 which follows another brother so i'm excited like as soon as i get the second book i will be picking that up but like i said they're all on ku but i want to read like the physical book about to throw on my ambiance room my disappearances of draco malfoy playlist on Spotify and just chill out for like half an hour before I head up to bed. We'll catch you guys later. I just wanted to kind of film a quick check-in. So today is Saturday. Um, no, Sunday. I didn't film at all yesterday because we had our family Christmas party and it was so, so much fun. I learned I really love hosting. It's a lot of work, um, but I just love it. Um, and I just love when like people enjoy the food that I make and like this time I put into things. Um, so I had a lot of fun and it was definitely a very, very good day. Um, so I just didn't really get to film, but I did get some reading done, um, later in the day. And if you hear anything in the background, my husband is playing video games with his family. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, but yes, I wanted to give you guys a reading update. So I know when I started this vlog, I was talking about the disappearances of Draco Malfoy by Speechwriter, which is a Dramione fan fiction. And I did start that yesterday, but I was having a hard time because I honestly haven't reread Harry Potter. Like I've reread the first four books. Um, I still have five through seven to reread. And this book is book seven rewritten. So as I was like reading it, I'm like, not confused because I know like a general happenstance of everything that like happens but I just didn't know like there were like little things where I was like wait what is that like I'm and I was just getting, getting confused um so I want to reread the rest of the series before I jump into the disappearances of Draco Malfoy um so yeah so I did put a pause on that I am still 100% gonna read it but Put a pause on that and then I picked up another book. So I ended up going to my library yesterday because they had a copy of this book and I literally couldn't find this book like anywhere. So I picked up Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir um, and I am currently on page 100 chapter 6. Look at this cute little feather. And it has like a little butterfly so when like you put it in the book and then it like dangles out. 
and I just think it's like the cutest thing. Um, so anyway, so I am yeah, 100 pages in and I am also, I'm, as I'm reading it visually, I'm listening to it on audio. So this is a sci-fi. I have literally never read a sci-fi book before, so I was very nervous and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of math, a lot of numbers, a lot of sciencey things happening. But I definitely think that listening to it, the audio while reading it is helping because I'm a visual learner and an audio learner. So having them both at the same time like has helped me kind of be able to grasp things. Like I don't think I could just listen to the audiobook with this. I would probably get very confused because I'm literally horrible at math. Um and anything with numbers really. So English was definitely my forte. Um but yeah, so I'm having a really fun time so far, and I definitely recommend the audiobook. The narrator is really, really good, um, and I'm just enjoying it a lot, and it's just kind of pulling me into the story even more, um, so I'm having a lot of fun. So the reason I picked this book up was because quite a few booktubers that I follow on here were talking about it. They put it like in their top 10 books of the year. And I was surprised because a lot of them are like fan row girlies and, um, you know, just romance. And so I honestly wasn't expecting it. And so I went to go to my Goodreads to add it to my want to read list. And lo and behold, Bestie Taylor read it last year. And so I texted her and I was like, hey, you read this book? And she was like, absolutely. You need to listen to the audio. And so she was my one of part of the inspiration for me picking this book up. So drove to the library, grabbed the book got the audio and sat down and I read literally 100 pages just when I was sitting down yesterday after the party. What the book is about, uh, okay, so you're following our main character and he wakes up, okay, and he hears this voice asking him a simple math problem, but he can't verbalize what the answer is. So the, the voice keeps saying incorrect, incorrect. So you're following this main character from when he's waking up from his deep slumber because he's been asleep for a, we don't know I don't know how long personally at this point but I'm assuming it's been a long time him kind of realizing where he is what kind of journey he's on what this you know voice is and kind of his circumstances in general um and then you know, as the story gets going, he obviously kind of starts remembering things. He gets flashbacks to before he gets on this spaceship type um, thing. And you kind of are learning about how he got to where he is. And then you're learning about what he's doing now while he's on this ship. Um, and he's all by himself. The two other people that he was with are deceased. Um, and they're still in their like pod things when he wakes up and he sees them at the at the beginning he doesn't know who they are but obviously eventually as his memories are coming back um and the only kind of companion that this guy has is that voice from the beginning which is like a i think like an ai like robot it has like arms so that it can like help him and you know it's like kind of just like the smart like a, you know, like smart house, like it run, runs a lot of the stuff on the ship can kind of get you things you need to get you food, water, things like that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all I know so far. Um, and in the flashbacks, you're obviously learning about how he got to where he is now. And it is so interesting to kind of learn about NASA and these interesting discoveries that they made. Um, and I just, I don't know, I'm really enjoying it. And I think you should kind of go in as blind as possible. I did just want to give you guys an update and let you know that I was a hundred pages into this and I did stop reading the disappearance of the Draco Malfoy. So today is, like I said, Sunday, um, it's Christmas Eve. So for plans, we don't really have a lot of plans today. We're going to my dad's house tonight, um, to exchange gifts with each other. And then, um, probably just watch a movie eat some dinner, hang out for a little bit. Um, and then, but until then, I don't really have any plans. So I do just plan on kind of reading for the day. Um, it is currently noon. I woke up, had breakfast, kind of cleaned up after yesterday. Um, just kind of spot cleaning. I mean, um, my mom and my aunt were great and 
they while I was like hosting, they like picked up everything like food wise and it was lovely. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna be kind of bebopping around the house today. I don't really have any plans. Might make myself a cup of tea. My allergies are just like driving me crazy. Like I woke up this morning and like you could probably, I, I was feeling so good like the last couple of days and then I swear it's like I get one bad night of, I don't even know what the heck I'm allergic to. So I don't know. My doctor just told me it's allergies. So that's what we're going with. Um, so I think I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and just sit down and read slash listen to my book. And I will touch base with you guys when I've made it um, a little bit further. just kind of do a quick check-in so I am pretty much at the halfway mark ish I am page 250 chapter 15 and I am it's currently like 11 30 I think almost midnight actually and quite frankly I don't want to go to bed um we went to my dad's house for like Christmas Eve that's where like I left off before we left and I literally just want to sit here and read it so bad but like and I'm not really tired but I feel like like once I like pick the book back up like I'm literally not gonna want to put it down like that's what happened this morning I picked up the the book when I was at 50 pages or so or wherever I left off this morning and I just like read like 90% of today I watched me and my husband watched a movie together for a little bit um but other than that this is what I've been doing <laughs> so I don't know if I want to read or not but I did want to give you guys that update <clears throat> let you know I'm loving it I'm loving listening to the audio oh my god we just got introduced to someone so I have decided I am not going to tell you guys anything about what this is about and I'm going to keep it as vague as possible because the main character of this book, you, he wakes up in this area. Like he doesn't know where he is, who he is, anything like that. And he's like learning about his current like situation and then how he got there through flashbacks. And it is so interesting learning it with him. It's like you're both starting at ground zero together and I'm loving it. And so I definitely recommend going in as blind as possible. Um. So yeah, so I'm probably going to pick this up either tonight or tomorrow I'm gonna read some more tomorrow's Christmas but because we did like our Christmas stuff Saturday I have nothing going on tomorrow which honestly I'm here for and then I'm off on Tuesday I do have to do one work errand and then I have a dentist appointment and the cats have a vet appointment but that's it so I'm pretty much gonna be reading the next two days which kind of makes me sad that I'm halfway through this um because I kind of just want to read more of his writing I'm definitely gonna pick up the Martian um I it's at my library but my library is closed tomorrow obviously it's Christmas which is fine because I probably won't finish this till tomorrow um so I can pick it up on Tuesday but I did want to do an, another li like a little quick library haul with you guys the first one is Sarah Hashem and the Jassad Air um I think this is a fantasy um and who was talking about this olivia reads a latte was talking about this and it's in a paperback which is kind of nice um but it just says it's a tale of shattered kingdoms forbidden magic and cunning royals 
unfolds in this Egyptian inspired epic fantasy debut. So she really, really enjoyed it. I think she rated it like one of her top books of the year. So I picked this up to read. I haven't really been in my fantasy era, but with reading this book, and I know this is sci-fi, um, I think I'm finally coming out of my weird slump that I was in. So I picked this up and then I also picked up the Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzen. Um, I honestly don't know what this is about. I think Olivia read this and she enjoyed it. Um, I don't really know what it's about. It says the fates of two bitter enemies with opposing magical abilities are swept together in the Hurricane Wars, the spellbinding debut in a fantasy romance trilogy. Ah, oh, fan row. So I'm sure I'll like it. So I also got this book as well. So like I said, I don't know if I'm going to pick up one of these next or if I'm going to pick up The Martian because um, I honestly haven't heard anything about The Martian, but like, I mean, I've heard of it. Like I've heard of the movie, um, but like, I feel like as far as like booktubers go, like two booktube girlies that I follow talked about this and I haven't really heard anybody talk about The Martian, but The Martian has like double the ratings on Goodreads and I think either the same or higher of a rating so if this was so popular I'm definitely down to try The Martian and I think Taylor read it so I might ask her what she thought of The Martian so yeah so I just wanted to keep you guys posted just kind of let you know that I am still absolutely loving Project Hail Mary like it's such a weird feeling like I feel like I'm just like enthralled like, I genuinely just do not want to put the book down. Like, and the audiobook is so, so, so good. Like, I definitely recommend listening to the audio. Oh my god. I'm just obsessed with this book, you guys. Barnes & Noble's also going to have their sale where they do, like, 50% off all hardcover books. So I'm probably going to go, because the library is right here, and I think they open at 9.00. So I think I'm going to go to the library and then go to Barnes and then go do my work errand. By the time I'm done with my work errand, I should be back in time for my dentist appointment. And then I'll have like an hour in between the dentist and the vet. My God. Um, and then after the vet, I'm home free. I don't know what their hours are on Tuesday though, so I'll have to look because I don't know if they open at 9 or... Oh my, that hour's right here. They open at 10. Okay, so that changes things. I might go see a movie called Anyone But You or something. It has Sydney Sweeney from Euphoria and then Glenn Powell, I think his name is. He was from like Set It Up on Netflix, which I love that movie. Um, so that comes out in theaters tomorrow. Um, so we might go see that tomorrow night. <music> So I wanted to film a quick update. So I just finished uh, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. And I had such a fun time with this book. Um, I keep teetering between like a four and a half to like a five. Um, I don't know what it was really missing because I genuinely couldn't put the book down. Like I read it in like less than three days. I 
genuinely was thinking about it. Like when I every time I put it down, like I just wanted to like pick it up. The audiobook is absolutely amazing and the narrator was phenomenal and I read it you know as well as listened to it at the same time and it just made the reading experience just that much better honestly. Um, so I definitely recommend it but I think my rating is going to be a 4.5 um, just because like I said I don't really know what it was missing like I genuinely just can't think of anything at the top of my head but like five stars isn't calling to me and usually when something's a five star like I know it's a five star, um, but it was definitely really, really good. And I had a really good time reading it. Tomorrow we are going to, I'm off tomorrow too, tomorrow's Tuesday. And we are going to run an errand for work really quick. And then I want to stop at Barnes and Noble because last year they had their 50% off hardcover sale the day after Christmas. I want to check just to see if they're doing that because I did get some Barnes & Noble gift cards for Christmas. Um, and then after that, I have to run to the library because I want to return this and I want to pick up The Martian because I do actually really want to read that next. Um, so I think I might extend this vlog. Originally, I was just going to do like a weekend reading vlog, but I only really read one book just because I was so busy this weekend with the holiday. Um, so I think I'm going to extend the vlog to the end of the week. Hopefully I'll finish The Martian. We'll just make this like an Andy Weir vlog. Um, so yes, yeah, so I do want to pick that up. And then I have a dentist appointment and the cats have a vet appointment. So busy day tomorrow. So I just wanted to kind of give you this check-in and now when I just finished it. For being science fiction, it was honestly generally easy to understand, even though I'm literally horrible at math and science. Um, it really wasn't anything like too crazy. Like I said, I did need to read it at the same time. If I was just listening to it, I would have been a lost cause on chapter one, honestly. Um, but it was really, really good. And I cannot wait to jump into The Martian. Um, and I do hear that they're going to be making a movie called Project Hail Mary, which now I can actually look up information on because I didn't want to get spoilers um, with Ryan Gosling. So I'm very excited about that. So definitely recommend and I will check you guys at some point tomorrow. Hey guys, so I wanted to just film a quick check-in. So I went to Barnes & Noble this morning. Today is Tuesday the 26th and they were having their like annual after Christmas sale. So last year it was 50% off all hardcovers. This year it was only 33%. Interesting, but you know, it's fine. Um, so I picked up three hardcovers and then three other books that I just, that I had wanted. And first one that I got, I'm actually very excited about. So I picked up The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. Um, I, this just got traditionally published. So I think only the first one is available in this like hardcover format. Um, but I am very excited. So I read Daughter of No World and I didn't like it. I rated it a two and a half star, but my mom read this and she loved it. And then when we were in California, we were out at breakfast one day and the waiter, I was reading Iron Flame on my, on my phone, on my Kindle app. And we got to talking and he said he, this is what he was currently reading. And he said he absolutely loved it and then definitely suggested that I read it. And then when I was at the checkout counter at Barnes, um and obviously a bunch of booktube girlies have talked about this book and then when i was at barnes the um cashier checking me out said that she read this and absolutely loved it so here's hoping that i do end up really enjoying this um i really like the cover of it i think it's really pretty and then when you take the dust jacket off, it is like really, really nice. And I'm very excited to read because I don't read it with dust jackets on. But just look at this cover, you guys. Like that is so pretty. Then the back has like a quote on it. And it's just so stunning. Like I love the naked uh, cover for this. Like... I am very excited. It's got, it looks like bat wings, a snake, and then a crown. And then, I don't know, some sort of other wings up top. But I really, very excited. I am very excited to pick this series up. Um, it is also on Kindle Unlimited. So I'm very excited. So that's the first book I got. And then the second and third book, they're a duology. So I picked up just both of them because they were both in hardcover so 
First, I got Divine Rivals, and then I got Ruthless Vows, which came out today, actually. So, um, I was very excited because I have been really wanting to read Divine Rivals. I have heard, like, everybody and their mother talk about this book, and I have been really dying to read it. The problem is, is that I just have not been in, like, a fantasy mood, and it is on KU, um, but I just, I haven't. I don't know. I've heard everyone talk about it and I just genuinely have not had the desire to pick it up. But I do eventually want to pick it up and I figured since I was there and before they switch this out with paperback copies because obviously I want the two to be the same. Um, and the two um, black copies just look so nice next to each other. And then, yes, yeah, so then I also picked up the Ruthless Vows Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. Um, I don't really know what's exclusive about it. <clears throat> it has, like, different end papers, I think. But I don't really know, know what else. Um, so I'm very excited to have both of them. And definitely I will be picking them up very, very soon. So, yep, Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows. And then I picked up... The do-over by Lynn Painter. They had this really pretty copy with these beautiful sprayed edges. So I'm very excited. This is what the front looks like. It's very pretty. Um, I literally just picked it up because of the sprayed edges. I haven't even read the other one my husband bought me, the Better Than the Movies. But, I mean, honestly, it's just going to go right on my pretty bookshelf here so very excited about that I like that Barnes is actually starting to do sprayed edges I noticed that they had a bunch of their exclusive editions sprayed edges whether it like had a design or whether it was just one solid color but I just noticed like even the um the inheritance games book that I got a while back the hardcover it has the sprayed edges so very excited about that and then the last book I got so Obviously, you guys know that I read Project Hail Mary, which, you guys, I'm still thinking about this book. Like, I want to reread the book, but, so I picked that up, obviously. Um, and so I wanted to get The Martian. That was, like, my sole purpose, because my library is closed today, and, like, I really, 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 really want to read it. So I went, and it said they had it at Barnes, so I was like, all right, great, I'll just grab it while I'm there. I get there. And who wants to tell me what what kind of copy they had there? They had the kind that has, I can show you on another book that I have. Um, it had the freaking stupid half cover. And I refused to buy it, truly. I was like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not going to be able to get this back. I was like, yeah, no, I'm not buying it. <laughs> So, because I really, I want the hardcovers, because I want the hardcover of Project Hail Mary as well. And they're on Amazon, I think, for like 20 bucks each. So, um, at some point, I'll buy them. Um, but my library has the hardcover. I just really want to read it in hardcover. I don't know why, but I do. So, I'm going to go to the library Thursday. They're open late. So, I'm going to go Thursday after work and return Project Hail Mary and pick up The Martian. And I'm going to probably start reading that on Thursday. Um, but the... So while I was looking around, I was like, I am just in a sci-fi mood. I don't know what it is, but Project Hail Mary unearthed something in me. And now I want to read another sci-fi book. So I ended up picking up Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. And this is what we're going to be reading next, I think. So I have heard a few people talk about this um and then I went on Goodreads to look at the ratings and a few of my like friends that I follow on there read it and gave it like five, four or five stars so I am very excited to pick this up um I don't know what it's about but I just know that it's like a, it's a sci-fi so um and it's a sci-fi that I've heard many things about many people talk about so I am very excited I think this might be the next book that we pick up I have a few options um that I can talk through with you guys but this is definitely one of the options I do also really want to pick up the serpent and the wings of night um book but I just am really really not in the mood for fantasy I don't think like I don't know what it is, but I genuinely just, I'm just not in the mood, which is a problem because uh, most of the books that I, like even all the books that I bought today, like are pretty much fantasy. So the only other two books that like I would kind of even think about reading are, I have those two other books I got from the library. I think Ender's Game 
is gonna be where it's at. If I like pick this up and then I decide I'm not in the mood for it, we'll see where I go from there. Ooh, there are all the books. Stonin. Stonin. I'm very excited to read all of these books, honestly. So I also forgot to talk about the couple books that I got for Christmas, you guys. So I got three books for Christmas. So I got another edition of Fourth Wing. You can never have too many editions of Fourth Wing. This one's just the regular. So right now I have obviously the original one that came out. So never hurts to have another edition. And then I got this thick boy. So I got 11, 22, 63 by Stephen King. This is thick. And I think that this also might be science fiction. I think there's like time travel. Um, Haley Pham read it and she absolutely loved it. I definitely want to pick this up very, very soon. I'm super excited about this book. I also got Icebreaker by Hannah Grace, which is a hockey hockey me saying it like i don't know but there's a hockey player on the cover um a hockey romance so i'm very excited to read this and i love books books just they make me so happy um So I just wanted to do a quick check-in before I went up to bed. Um, so I am on page 124 of Ender's Game. And I am about halfway through. And I am not enjoying it. <laughs> um, so, so far what I've gathered is that you're following our main character, Ender. He's six years old, and he is a very smart person, or a smart child, him and his two siblings. And he is the third born child in a world where you're only supposed to have two children, but the government allows the parents to have a third child because um the other two kids are so smart and so they think that ender the third child will kind of be a good mix of his two siblings and be able to quickly aid in the war against the buggers which i think are like aliens or something um so that's kind of where it starts. And then after that, I don't want to like give too much away, but a lot of it takes place in at battle school, um, which is where Ender ends up getting taken to, to be trained. And like, he's being kind of manipulated behind the scenes because the government thinks that he is like, gonna kind of be the savior I guess of this whole thing and so he's very quickly learning and adapting to things whatever the the government or his handlers like throw at him he's solving and he's very just quickly like getting 
getting through things. So I don't know. So let me just read the back. So it just says Earth has been under attack for generations. An alien race is poised for a final assault. At the battle school, Ender Wigan thinks he's playing a computer war game. He is, in fact, engaged in something far more desperate. Is Ender the general the Earth needs? The only way to find out is to throw the child into ever harsher training to chip away and find the diamond inside or destroy him entirely. Um, Ender Wigan is six. When it begins, he will grow up fast. But Ender is not only the result of the experiment. The war with the Formix, so the Formix, I've only heard them heard buggers, so I don't know, has been raging for a hundred years and the quest for the perfect general has been underway for almost as long. There are other remarkable children at the battle school. Ender's allies and enemies and Ender's two older siblings, Peter and Valentine, are every bit unusual as he is, but in very different ways. He kind of gets things done and he is playing. They have these like desks, which I'm, I don't know. I'm assuming they're like these like holographic desks that are portable, like kind of like a laptop. Um, and you can play games on them and Ender plays this game you know the game on there and he's like beating things that no one else can beat and then I guess the game is kind of ever evolving to kind of keep up with Ender and keep training him in different ways through the computer as well as whatever he's doing in his training and you know his um physical and in-person training with other people so he's being trained kind of mentally with the game <clears throat> and then physically and mentally with his allies and enemies at battle school. So that part is interesting. And I am in, like, I just feel like just am not, I'm not as enthralled as I thought I would be at this point in the book. Uh, the dialogue is really not my thing. Like just the way the characters, some of the characters talk. And I'm assuming that it's because in this battle school, it's a bunch of different like kids and they're coming from all these different like, you know, dialects and language speaking um, countries. And so I'm sure that might have something to do with it, but I don't really know because it's never really explained. Um, at least not that I read. I'm going to finish it because it's pretty short and I'm already halfway through. Hey guys, so... Wanted to film a quick update. So I actually DNF'd Ender's game at that 50% mark. Uh, it was just not for me. It wasn't like, I don't know. I genuinely just wasn't enjoying it. Um, I didn't really like the characters. I didn't like the dialogue. Um, I just, I don't know. I was not a big fan and I was already, like I was already halfway through. So I was definitely just going to push through, but I just honestly couldn't couldn't do it heard hannah's recent reads on here talk about the murder bot diaries series um and they're very short books i believe all of them and they're actually on kindle unlimited and so i picked up the first one which is all systems red if you'll be able to see it um, and I'm like halfway through it and I'm actually enjoying it so far. Um, so essentially you're following the robot and he has like hacked his own system. So that way his like governor module is turned off. So he doesn't necessarily need to follow all the rules that his like company sets for him. Um, and what I'm gathering from it is that there's this big company that like loans out these sec unit robots um and other things to these teams that like travel around the solar system to you know gather information um and they think they have like insurance and all that so essentially he's there to like make sure like if they need help with anything or like to record their conversations to make sure that they're not planning to like kill each other or like f defraud or like overthrow like this big company that essentially like controls all of like the supplies that these people need in order to in like the ships I think in order to study the planets.
and such. Don't know if that's right, but I'm only halfway through the first book and the first book's only like a hundred and something pages. So I'm just getting into the nitty gritty, but I am liking it. I'm liking the main, the main character. He calls himself Murderbot. Um, so I am really enjoying his character a lot. And I think that he's pretty funny and he has to like pretend a lot of times that he is still still has that governor module otherwise the team that he's working with currently could report him um and i'm sure obviously something bad will happen so i'm gonna finish this up probably today i think i'm listening to the audio with it um so i think i only have like let's see like an hour left um they're all on scribd and they actually all have graphic audio which i love graphic audios and these are on kindle limited so um, so I have an hour and nine minutes left and I am actually listening to the regular audio because I didn't know there was graphic audio until I had already downloaded this one and Scribd only lets you listen even though they're like unlimited. They only let you listen to like a certain number of books in the same genre. So I didn't want to like, since I already downloaded this and started, I didn't want to like then download the graphic audio and then when I want to listen to the second one, like, mm, you hit your max. So I'm just going to listen to the rest of them graphic audio. Did buy, well, I ordered new stickers for my Kindle because I'm just ready for a change. So I ordered a Project Hail Mary one and I'm so excited. It's um, one of the characters and it says fist my bump. And I'm literally so excited. It's the cutest thing ever. And then I ordered a Dramione one and a Zodiac Academy one. So when those come in, I will show you guys and show you where I'm kind of putting them on my Kindle. outro for this week's video so in this video i read project hail mary by andy weir absolutely loved it i just i love this book so so much um and honestly i'm probably gonna buy myself a copy and reread it next year because this was honestly just so good four and a half stars i know i mentioned it before but need to talk about it again because I just love this book so much. Love it. And then after that I picked up Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card but I did DNF that at 50% and I talked about that at length yesterday. And then I also started All Systems Read by Martha Wells. This is the first Murderbot Diaries novella. It's a series of I think seven books. Six of them I think are novellas. Um, so I did finish this and I gave it a, th I'm leaning between like a three, 3.25. It was really, really entertaining, but it's only like 150 pages. So I feel like I can't really give it like four or five stars. Um, that may change, but for now it's a solid three, 3.25, really, really good. It's like I said, very quick, fast paced. I really like the sci-fi elements of it. I like our main character. He's really funny and really witty. Um, and he kind of just says and does what he wants and he likes to watch his reality TV. Um, I don't know if I ever really talked about what this book is about, but, or the series, but essentially you're following our main character and he calls himself Murderbot. And he, um, is like pretty much like, he's called a sec unit, which is like a security unit. So, there's like this really big bond company that protects um, like small surveying teams and like all these other, you know, things. Um, and they will pay like a bond. And then if anything happens to the people, as long as they like follow all these rules, there's like a payout, you know, in case anything happens to them. And so every team gets like one sec unit for every 10 people. That way, 
the security unit can monitor everything, make sure everyone's following the rules, and so on and so forth. But what they don't know is that Murderbot has disabled his governor module, which means that he doesn't have to follow those rules. He pretends to, that way no one like suspects him, but he doesn't have to, and he just wants to spend his time watching his soap operas and reality TV shows. And it was really, really good, really entertaining. So that is the end of this vlog. It was very sci-fi heavy. And these, like I said, were my first sci-fi books that I read. And I enjoyed two out of three of them, so that is not bad. Um, and I think that my next vlog is also going to be pretty sci-fi heavy, but... You know, it is what it is. I hope you guys all had a wonderful holiday and thank you for spending the holiday weekend with me. And I will catch you guys all in my next video. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.